I just wanted to mention as a disclaimer at the start of this video that the green bubble technique that we're using for the mouth might be problematic for some people in that when you record the dialogue for your animation you generally use the different drawings that you made for the different mouth positions and swap them intermittently throughout your animation to match the dialogue. This keying and swapping of drawings of the mouth will exist only for one of the two cloned mouth layers. So what you're going to have to do at the end is copy the timing from the original mouth layer and then paste it into the clone layer which will be used as a mask for the cutter effect. Um, and you'll see what I mean as I go through the tutorial. So just to make a note that when you're animating one of the mouths, it's not going to follow suit. It's not going to be cloned for that second mouth. Um, if you feel like this might be too much trouble just to get a, a clean open mouth look to your character, a workaround that you can use is that you can paint the inside of the character's mouth black so that it covers the yellow head that peeks through from behind. So welcome to the tutorial using effects to fix the character's mouth. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use a mask and two color override effects to get rid of this green bubble around the character's mouth but at the same time create a hole in the head shape of the character so that it looks natural as he's talking with an open mouth. So to start we're going to add a keyframe on the first column of the Karate Rabbit Master Peg. So to do this you simply need to select the cell and then you can click on this button here that says KF for keyframe uh, with the plus sign on it and that automatically inserts a keyframe and then if you uncollapse the peg and uncollapse all the subsequent uh, layers you'll see that there's actually a keyframe in the first cell of every layer. So the next thing we want to do is add the two effects that I was talking about. The first one being a mask and the second one being the color override which is here. And we're actually going to add two of those. In case you can't see what I'm doing, I'm clicking on the little plus button here. You can tell by the black tab or arrow in the corner that there are more menu options. The first one, the mask, is in the first menu. The second one is in the effects menu and it's the second from the top, the color override. So then what we're going to do is actually take all of these, so I'm going to shift and click on them, and drag them to the proper place in the timeline. In the upper body, under the neck, under the head, um, and actually under the facial features, which is where we're going to find the mouth. So as I mentioned before, yeah, the mouth is right here. So we're going to scroll to the three-quarter view so that we can see it. And what we want to do first is select the mouth and we want to clone it. And that's because we need two copies of it. Um, one to attach the mask and one to attach the color override. So to do this, we're going to select the mouth and click on this button here, clone selected layers. So it's sort of the equal sign and not the plus sign. We're not duplicating, we're cloning. And what a clone is, is it's not only a copy, but what happens to one will occur in the other. And that is in reference to modifying the original drawing. However, you can set the timing differently for cloned layers. Um, but what we actually want in this case is we don't want the timing to be set differently. We want uh, these to be linked so that if I perform a transformation, on one, the same transformation will occur on the other. And admittedly, this is much easier in Animate Pro because these two layers, these clones, would be linked automatically, whereas in Animate, we have to do it manually. So the first thing we have to do is select the original layer, so Karate Rabbit underscore mouth, right click on it, and select the menu item share functions. The next thing we have to do is link all the functions from the original, so Karate Rabbit underscore mouth to its clone karate rabbit underscore mouth underscore one. So we can do this in two different ways. We can either do it through the data view or through the layer properties. So I'll do the first one in the data view just to show you. So I have to uncollapse the karate mouth underscore one so the clones um, different functions. And then what you should do is click on this function icon and then go to the menu item connected Karate Rabbit Mouth, so this is the original, and right now we're looking at the 
x position. So we're going to go to position x here. The other way of going about doing it is if you double click on the clone to bring up its layer properties, you can also do it from this function button here. So in this case we're looking at position Y. So I'm going to click on the drop down menu, select the menu item connected, go to the original, and then go to position Y. And you have to do this either in the data view or the layer properties for all of the positions, scale, rotation, and skew functions. So I'm going to continue to do that now. And then once you're finished, you simply need to click on the close button. So the next thing we're going to do is re-collapse the clone layer. And then we're going to hook these two mouths to the respective color override effect. Which are down here now. So I'm going to drag the first one up over here. Oops that and I'll hook the mouth to it. And then I'm going to double click on the effect to bring up its layered properties. So in this one what we're going to do is scroll down and we're looking for the indicator color. Actually before I continue I just realized that from the palettes you see there's quite a few palettes that you may have picked up along the way from importing various drawings uh, maybe from the gathering content chapter, um, from creating, uh, you know, the text, the dojo, things like that. And for our template, uh, for our final rabbit scene, we don't need all these palettes. The only one we really need is the rabbit, and I think we could keep its clone, the rabbit knight. Um, so let's take care of getting rid of these first, and then I'm going to come back to this palette here. So if we click on the small arrow here, and I'm going to actually make this full view, you have a list of all your palettes, and if you click on each of the palettes, you can see which colors are inside. So you can either get rid of a palette manually by selecting it in this first window and clicking on the minus sign here. But that isn't the most efficient way to get rid of a palette for three reasons. First of all, if you have a long list of palettes, you have to go through them each manually by clicking on the minus sign for each palette. Also, if you accidentally painted your cartoon rabbit with any of these palettes and then you delete it, then you're going to essentially delete that color from your scene. Thirdly, the template that I just deleted isn't actually deleted from my program file, and I'll show you what I mean. So in the palette library folder, the text underscore three PLT is still there. So even though it's deleted from our scene, we're still carrying around its baggage with us. It's still adding to our file size. It's still there um, residually. So to actually get rid of your palettes, not only from your scene, but also from that folder, and to also do it in a way that you don't end up deleting any colors from your scene, there's one fast thing that you can do. If you go to the file menu, you can select the menu item remove unused files. And it gives you a list of the files that are not really being used in your scene and usually they're palettes as you can see by the name of the window here, remove unused palettes from scene list. And you can actually drag this until you can see the full file name if you really need to. It shows you the location as well as the name of the palette. And this will remove it from your scene. And then if you want to delete it from that folder, you can also check either of these or check select all and say OK. And then what it ends up doing is removing those extra unnecessary palettes um, from your scene and from your file. So let's go back to the color override. And I just went back into its layer properties by double clicking on it. So now we just have the two palettes that we want. And what we're going to do is scroll all the way down until we find the indicator color. 
and then all you need to do is click on the indicator color and drag it up to this window here it says color override and then from this override heading if you click in the column underneath the heading you can select the menu option color not visible and then say close so right now we can still see the green but that's because we have two copies of the mouth the way this color override is acting is it actually negates that color from your camera view as well as from your render but you can see we still have a problem here because you can see the yellow head underneath the mouth and what we really want to see here is nothing we want it to be transparent which should be indicated in this case by this gray background color so we have one more step to do um, we're going to take the other mouth and we're going to attach it to the other color override effect So you just drag it over the effect to hook it on and then you double click on the effect to open its layer properties. So we're going to look for the same color, the indicator, but this time instead of putting it in the color override section, we're going to put it in the selected colors section. So I'm going to drag and drop it in there and then I'm going to check mark the box render selected colors only and click close. So now what this color override is doing is it's doing the opposite of what the other color override is doing. Instead of cutting out the green and leaving the mouth, it's actually cutting out the mouth and leaving the green. And that's because we want to use this green shape to cut away from the head shape. So now what we're going to do is attach this entire second color override to the mask that we, we brought in. So we want to attach the head to the top part of the mask here because this is what we want the mask to cut away from. And we want to attach the color override to the mask. So this is what we're going to actually do the cutting with. So it was that second color override here. We're going to attach that over the mask. So this is the actual mask. This is the actual shape that's being cut away from this shape right here which is the head and as you can see that's exactly what's going on in the camera view and it works for all of the green shapes so this both this uh, cell number 19 and number 18 had that green bubble and as you can see it's gone for both so that's it for the tutorial using effects to fix the mouth. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, creating templates of your character.